Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, if Monday Night Football was a job interview, well, let's just say it didn't go so well for Tom Brady. That plus your calls and texts are coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, Tuesday, January 17th, 2023. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And won. And won. And And welcome here, Raider Nation, to another edition of the Locked On Raiders Podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen each and every day. Remember, you can find the Locked On Raider Podcast free and available on all platforms. That includes YouTube. Thanks to my man Ari, he's doing a fantastic job each and every day, making sure we're up on YouTube and looking good. On YouTube, you can find Ari on Twitter at Ari Produces. You can always hit me up on Twitter as well at your boy Q254. And of course, the Lockdown Raider Podcast voicemail line is 707 654 4693. Today's edition of the show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. You pick two to five players. If they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked On. That's prizepicks.com. Promo code locked on. Got a lot to get to on today's show. And before we go any further with Tuesday's show, I want to kind of go back to Monday's show because clearly I need to clear up a few comments that was made about quarterback Derek Carr. And it's so funny. Everyone knows I really stay away from conversation about Derek Carr because somebody's going to take it really bad. Someone's going to take it really good. You know, it's like there's no in between when it comes to Derek Carr. He's really a hard subject to talk about. Because you're either going to make someone really angry or you're going to make someone really happy or you're going to be called like a a stan, a car stan or a car bashian or whatever, you know, whatever the case may be. And it's really a fine line. And because I don't like to talk about the quarterback all the time, I really find other things to talk about and then include him in conversation that you have to. And obviously right now you have to include him in conversation. So on Monday's show, on the Martin Luther King show, I was talking about what the Raiders do at the quarterback position. And I do think it's very important what they do moving forward. And I was talking about finding a guy that is the dude, right? And that's what I really hope they do. I hope they find a long-term solution that is a guy, a monster, a Patrick Mahomes type guy, a a Justin Herbert type guy, like a, a guy that everyone looks around the league and is like, man, that's the dude. Clearly, I didn't say that correctly on Monday and that's okay. I'm okay with that. You know, if I say something and and it's not, it doesn't come away the cross the way that I want it to, I don't have a problem going back and saying so. And I also don't have a problem with someone points it out and brings it to my, my attention. But there was a couple tweets that I got and one in particular that I really wanted to address because I sure hope that nobody took it this way. But if there was one person that responded this way, clearly there was. So that, that meant a lot to me. Uh, My guy, King David at black at underscore black solo underscore on Twitter said, at your boy Q254, uh, in quotations, I'm not a guy that's going to come on here and bash Derek Carr, end quote. Every time you say that, that's exactly what you do. But today's pod, you took it a step further to bash the man for his passion of religion. That's low, that's BS. And that's from King David at underscore Black Solo underscore. And first of all, I would never, ever bash anyone for their religion. Whoever and whatever you believe in is your business. I have no problem. I've never come on here and said anything political because I don't care what your politics are, just like you don't care what my politics are. And I will never bash someone for their religion because I don't mind your religion, just like you don't mind my religion. I've never, ever done that. You can go through any show that I've done. I've done over a thousand shows, and you could tell that I've never, ever said anything about someone's religion. I did mention, and I'm going to play the 50 seconds. There was actually a part where I said, in the show on Monday. I'm not a guy that's going to come on here and bash Derek Carr. But then I could I continued to talk for five minutes and 33 seconds before I ever got to a point where you could maybe take it as me bashing Derek Carr. When I went back and listened, I said, okay, I can see how that's misconstrued. But it was five minutes and 33 seconds of conversation. So I'll just play the 50 seconds that maybe King David is talking about. And I even got a, a tweet from my guy uh, at Chingon84. It said, listen to the podcast this morning. Really didn't believe how you think Derek Carr didn't have it in him. After the way he carried this team last season, respect what you do and realize we won't agree on everything. That's from David Martinez on Twitter at Chingon84. So two different tweets about what I said about Derek Carr, but the one about me talking about his religion is definitely not something I would ever do. And I realized that he talked at a church over the weekend, and that was great. And there's, you know, there's clips of it going around Twitter, and that's fine. I have no problem with that. Never cared about Derek Carr and whatever he chooses to do. 
But this is what King David was talking about. And I just want to make sure I set the record straight before anything else. So here's what he was talking about. You've got to have a trigger man that has that mentality as well. And I like Derek Carr. I think he's sustained that position. You heard me say it a million times. I just don't know if he had the fire to make this team, put the team on his shoulder and, and, and say, hey, follow me. We're going to get to the promised land. I don't know if his passion was strong enough to be that guy, if that makes sense. Again, not trying to bash the guy, but I know that there's other things that he, you know, has passions about and he loves, and that's fine. You know, it's not, it doesn't have to be football all the time. Football, 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 nothing else. I get it. That's okay. But, man, I'd like to see a guy, whoever the next guy is going to be, the next quarterback, long-term solution for the Raiders at quarterback, be a guy with some fire in him that won't accept, you know, bad play or wrong routes ran or drop passes or not blocking or whatever the case may be won't stand for mediocrity. So again, there was really like a five and a half minute, maybe six minute clip. Again, I'm not going to play the whole thing that would take up the whole segment, but I can understand where he's coming from, where he's where, where I said passion. I know that he's passionate about preaching. I know he's passionate about a lot of things, right? And so to assume, I never said anything about religion in that clip, as you can hear it. And if you want to hear the whole thing, you can go back to the show and listen to it on Monday. I haven't changed any of it. I haven't edited any of it. That would be a waste of my time and yours. I never would talk about someone's religion, so please don't get that misconstrued. All the thing I was talking about was a dude that was so passionate, like a Max Crosby. Like I played that 13-minute clip from Max Crosby in the locker room where he's like, I want dudes like me. I want guys that, you know, they want to live, breathe, and die this stuff and just, you know, want to want to win at all costs. That's, that's what I was talking about. And maybe I should have just played the Max Crosby clip. I could have, and I probably would have made it a lot clearer, but... I just wanted to make sure that I clarify or clarify, excuse me, what I was talking about on Monday's show because I don't ever want anyone to think I would ever hold anyone's race, religion, sexual orientation, none of that stuff against them. That's not how I get down, and anyone who's listened to me knows that that's not how I get down. So I'll go ahead and throw that out there first. And, you know, I know I, I responded to King David, and I said, hey, man, if that's how you, you took it, I apologize. And he, you know, responded, I don't need your apology. I don't need your cleanup. No, it's none of that. I'm just letting it be known that is not – ever been me that never will be me and so that's why i found it important to address it on today's show so if anyone thought it and took it that way that definitely was not what i was talking about i was talking about a dude who was an over-the-top type football player you know a guy that was going to be up and down the sideline if you know a guy is dropping the ball like hey man get your head in the game let's get focused you know a guy who's gonna light a fire under his team and that's what i was talking about when uh, my guy David said, uh, you know, didn't have the fire in him. I just want to see a guy who's more fired up on the sideline. I realize that that's not really uh, what you're going to see a lot of anymore. You don't see coaches that are that much fired up, but that's what I thought you were going to get in Gruden, Gruden 2.0. I thought you were going to get a fired up guy that wasn't going to, um, you know, stand for, uh, you know, silly penalties and, and, and poor execution. Was a guy that was going to be Chucky like he was the first time. He wasn't. And Josh McDaniels is not like that either. But I would like to see that from the quarterback position, a guy who gets pissed off when someone runs the wrong route or when the offensive line doesn't block. I would like to see that, a little bit of, you know, just fire and, and, and energy. And that's just me, though. And, you know, when it's a show that I'm going to do, I'm going to express that. So that's where I was going with that conversation. So hopefully that clears it up. If not, I mean, hey, at least I tried. <laughs> at least I addressed it because I do think it was important to address. Now, moving on, uh, my final little news and note I have for segment number one of today's Locked On Raiders podcast, and then we'll talk about uh, Tom Brady on Monday Night Football against the Dallas Cowboy. Woo, not a very good game, right? Uh, C.J. Stroud from Ohio State, he officially declared for the NFL draft on Monday, and Monday was the day that they had to declare. So if you're looking at some of the quarterbacks, if you're thinking maybe the Raiders will go and draft a quarterback, because that's obviously going to be one of the biggest topics of the offseason. I mean, there's some guys in the draft. Right. I think that there's the three the top three, Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, Will Levitz, uh, Bryce Young from Alabama, CJ Stroud from Ohio State, Will Levitz from Kentucky. There's others as well. Anthony Richardson from Florida. Uh, you know, the Raiders could possibly be interested in him and, and his, you know, potential not right away. I don't think Anthony Richardson would be a guy that could start right away and you feel comfortable with him. I think he's got a long way to go. Dorian Thompson Robinson from uh, UCLA DTR. He's actually going to be here in Vegas at the East West Shrine Bowl. So I'm going to get a chance to catch him out, uh, catch him, you know, see him up close to personal uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Hendon Hooker from Tennessee, he's obviously coming back from the uh, ACL. He tore his ACL late in the season. He was a guy that I thought was going to win the Heisman Trophy until he tore that ACL. And then Clayton Toon from Houston, another guy that a lot of folks are talking about. So 
those are really the guys that I have on my radar. Not saying that those are going to be the franchise dudes. Not saying that the Raiders have any of those dudes on their radar. But those are really the ones I'm looking at. And the big question was, was C.J. Stroud going to declare for the draft? He eventually did on Monday. So Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Will Levitz, Anthony Richardson, DTR, Hendon Hooker, and Clayton Toon. All guys that I have on my radar that I'll be doing a little bit of deep diving into. Don't think that all those guys are obtainable. Where the Raiders sit not right now at number seven, I think Young is off the table, C.J. Stroud's off the table, and probably Will Levitz as well. So maybe you're looking at Anthony Richardson from Florida, a DTR from UCLA, Hendon Hooker from Tennessee. Obviously, he's going to be rehabbing. You wouldn't need him to play for a couple seasons. And then Clayton Toon from Houston as well. So those are probably the ones that are realistic options, but I'll, I'll throw all seven out there because those are the ones that I kind of have my eye on. So that's all I got for you for segment number one of today's Locked On Raiders podcast, news and notes of the day. Coming up in segment number two, got to talk about Tom Brady versus the Cowboys and what he didn't do on Monday Night Football and what Raider Nation is thinking, at least from what I saw on Twitter and the people that were hitting me up and what I saw as well. We'll do that coming up in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Before I get to that, though, I do want to tell you about the title sponsor, which is Prize Picks. And Prize Picks is daily fantasy made simple. There's no competing against anybody. That's what's awesome. It's you versus the prize picks projections. You can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. You pick two to five players that they score more or less than those projections. You can win that money. Again, no competing versus other people. Prize picks offers projections in any sport that you watch, NFL, NBA, NHL, PGA, college basketball, college women's basketball, all of that WNBA when it comes back. They've got you covered. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's super easy, safe, and fast withdrawals. Currently operational in over 30 states and in Canada. All you got to do is download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked On. You deposit $100, PrizePix is going to give you $100. You deposit $50, PrizePix will give you $50. Don't forget, enter the promo code Locked On and sign up for instant deposit match up to $100. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Got to talk about what we saw to wrap up Super Wild Card Weekend, and that was Tom Brady and the Buccaneers versus the Dallas Cowboys. All the storylines were there. The Cowboys haven't beat the Buccaneers. They haven't beat Tom Brady in the playoffs. They haven't beat Tom Brady, period. Uh, they haven't won in like 30 years on the road in the playoffs. I mean, all the storylines were there, and it's so funny. I kept saying it would be so Cowboy-like for them to just go in there and win the game. Well, they beat the brakes off the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And it wasn't necessarily the fact that they beat the brakes off the Buccaneers. Uh, it was the fact that Tom Brady looked like old Tom Brady, right? And on my radio show on Monday, I was at the Oyo Hotel and Casino, the Underground Lounge, Monday Night Football. I asked Raider Nation, are you paying attention to this game a little bit more because of the rumors and all the speculation about Tom Brady possibly being on the radar of the silver and black? And some people said, yes, they are. They're locked in a little bit more because they want to see And Others said, no. Uh, really don't want him, think he's old, don't think he's got it uh, anymore in the tank, and so not really paying attention to it. It was funny, after the game, I was watching Sports Center and Ryan Clark was talking about where Tom Brady could go after this season because he doesn't think he's going to return to Tampa Bay, and he pointed the fingers at, at the Raiders. Hey, he can go somewhere with a number one wide receiver, uh, a really good run game, a really good tight end, and a head coach that he's, co uh, he's comfortable with. And he pointed at the Raiders. And I'm not saying that he's going to, but that's the conversation that's out there. It's Tom Brady, it's Jimmy G, and maybe a couple others. I mean, we've said it before, you know, Aaron Rodgers would be a long shot. I know a lot of people have thrown Lamar Jackson out there. I think that's a long shot as well. But those are really the veterans that are out there that maybe the Raiders would be interested in. If not, they're going to the draft, they're getting somebody and maybe competing with Jared Stidham. And that's really where we're at as far as the quarterback position goes. So if Monday Night Football was a job a job interview, I would say Tom Brady failed. Uh, the Buccaneers, first of all, don't have a very good team. We said that all season long. Uh, they got into the playoffs because that division is not very good. They weren't even a 500 team. They don't run the ball at all. Tom Brady was 35 for 66. 35 for 66. Like, the yardage doesn't even matter because at the end of the game, he started picking up yards, a couple touchdowns, had an interception. But he was 35 for 66, and the thing about it is he was throwing – there would be a pass where you're like, wow. Like he threw a touchdown pass to Julio Jones. You're like, wow, that was a really good pass. And then there's simple out, out routes that he was throwing and missing bad. Like he was missing over the middle bad. And I know the Cowboys' defense had something to say about that. It's not like they just let him do whatever they wanted to do. But Brady just did not look like the part. He literally looked like an older dude. Now, I'm not saying that based off of one game – 
he's, you know, washed and he can't play. Maybe he takes the offseason and he rests up. I mean, this has been a hell of a year for him. I mean, the guy went through a divorce that was very public. I mean, he's gone through a lot. So who knows? Maybe that just wore on him and he just wasn't the same. I know when, you know, things are going on with me in my personal life, sometimes, you know, shows aren't the same. Sometimes I'm, you know, I'm a little worn down. I'm not the same guy because I got so much going on. That, that happens. So I'm saying he could be that dude. But if you're basing what the Raiders are going to do this offseason and, and possibly trying to bring Tom Brady to the organization to be the franchise quarterback based off what you saw Monday night, you can't have a very good feeling right now. Look, the thing about it is Tom Brady has a no tag clause in his contract, so he's going to be an unrestricted free agent this offseason. He might choose to retire. He said he was going to play until he's 45. He's 45 right now. So obviously he's got a lot of soul searching. He said after the game that he was going to, uh, you know, go and get a good night's sleep and he was going to let everything just happen how it happens, but he's going to take his time. He wasn't going to rush into it. He felt like when he said that he was going to retire last off season, he was kind of rushed into it. So he's going to take his time. He very well could just walk off into the sunset and say, you know what? I'm done. Or he could say, you know what? There's plenty of teams that want me. He might be able to go to the jets he might decide to go to the Dolphins. He could, you know, think about the Raiders. People are talking about the 49ers. I don't think that that's a realistic option, but there's teams out there, clearly the Colts, there's teams out there that that have needs at quarterback. So just because he's an unrestricted free agent doesn't mean that he's any, any if he chooses to play, mean he's going to sign with the Raiders. He could end up going anywhere. But I'll tell you right now, based off what I saw Monday night, and, and obviously everyone was watching since it was Monday night football and it was in prime time, I did not see something that I was impressed by. And I know that he's completed a record number of passes this past season. He had to because the Buccaneers have no run game. So, I mean, if you look at the weapons that the Raiders have, obviously they do have a run game in Josh Jacobs. They do have a tight end in Darren Waller. They do have a number one wide receiver in Devontae Adams. And, of course, they have head coach Josh McDaniels. But as we've all talked about, that's really just a Band-Aid. That's a one- to two-year fix at the most. So what are the Raiders going to do based off that after that, right? What's the next, what's the next solution? So I'm not sure what they're going to do. I know that if all of a sudden it came out and said, hey, you know, Tom Brady's interested in signing with the Raiders, I don't think anyone who watched that game Monday night would be excited by that. I'll tell you that because some of the passes that he missed, some of the, like I said, he made a handful of passes that I said, okay, that looks good. But he did not look comfortable at all out there. He just, again, looked like he looked like he was 45, right? Father time, uh, you know, is undefeated. And he's been pushing father time and pushing father time and pushing father time uh, for the longest. But, man, he just he just looked like it was a rough deal. And like I said, the Cowboys have a strong defense. Dan Quinn's going to be a head coach somewhere for a reason, most likely. He's got multiple opportunities, including uh, an interview with the Denver Broncos. I mean, he could end up in the AFC West for all we know. Dan Quinn's a really good defensive coordinator, and the Cowboys' defense is good. So he might be able to dominate like he did the last week of the season against the Falcons. But against a team with a really good defense – you have to think that, okay, he's going to struggle. And if you want the Raiders to be where they want to be, which is not only in the playoffs but making a run, they're going to have to go through some tough defenses. So if he can't take out a tough defense, then is it worth signing? Is he worth signing? So, again, a lot of things could happen in the course of the offseason. He can get rested up, get rejuvenated, and come back and feel like he's you younger and faster and stronger, whatever the case is. Like, he's that guy. Or he could be the guy that we all saw Monday night. So I, I, I think that the Raiders – Front office when it comes to Dave Ziegler, Champ Kelly, uh, even Mark Davis, right? Who's, a, I know, a big fan of Tom Brady. I think everyone should at least be second-guessing themselves and saying, hold on, man, if this is the decision that we're going to do, if this is the, the move that we're going to make, we better think long and hard about what we just saw Monday night. Because what we just saw, as far as what I just saw, as the, the, the Cowboys beat the brakes out the Buccaneers 31-14, to was not a very good performance from Tom Brady. and. Look, I know he threw the ball 66 times because the Buccaneers have no run game and they were so far behind that they had to just go ahead and keep slinging the rock around the yard. But it just was not, it did not look very good to me at all. I had plenty of people hitting me up saying, is that the quarterback that you want? And I was like, hey, that's the, that's the conversation that's out there. I'm not saying that I want that guy. Now, I'll tell you this. If it comes down to Tom Brady playing or Jimmy G playing, I would take Tom Brady because at least I feel like he's going to play all season. Jimmy G, I feel like he's going to miss a handful of games as he's injured right now. Right. That's that's the only caveat. But as far as, you know, which one's better, you know, I mean, maybe even a young Jimmy G is probably better equipped to to run the offense, but you just can't trust his his durability. So you'd have to run with, with Tom Brady as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we all know that he's the, you know, the best quarterback to do it. 
But how much does he have left in the tank? That tank looked like it was pretty close to empty on Monday Night Football. So that's all I got for you, Raider Nation. Love to hear your thoughts on it. 707-654-4693. That's the Locked On Raider Podcast voicemail line. We got calls and texts coming up in segment number three of the show after I tell you about betonline.net, your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every pro and amateur league out there from pro football, uh, college basketball, everything that you can imagine. They've got the NHL. Yeah, they got that covered as well. If you love sports podcasts, clearly you do. You can find those as well at betonline.net. Net. They're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting information on. All you got to do is head to the website today on your laptop or your mobile device. Learn about more. BetOnline.net. That is where the game starts. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to get to your calls and text straight off that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Let's start off with a text from Cucamonga Raider. He said, hey, Q, I'm sitting here watching the Cowgirls game because I wanted to see a complete game on Brady. But before I get to that, Boy, am I thankful for Carlson after watching the fourth straight PAT miss. Anyhow, I know it's only one sample size. It's the third quarter as I type this, but if we really do pursue Brady, boy, oh boy, are we going to have to really beef up our line. That pressure has him really rattled, and he does not run, as we know, already. We're also going to have to put the full court press for a middle-of-the-pack defense or better. At this point, I'd rather just save our money and roll with Stidham, to be honest. I'm actually getting really nervous on this, on the quarterback situation. I know it's early, LOL, and what do I know? I'm only an armchair GM. Thanks, for, Thank you, and keep doing what you do, Q. Have a good one. That's Cucamonga Raider, and thank you for the text, my man. And really, that goes back to segment number two. That goes back to exactly what I was talking about in segment number two. And Cucamonga Raider, you are not wrong. Right. I mean, I'm I'm a guy that's saying, hey, whoever they go and get at the quarterback position, uh, we'll see how it goes. They have to get it right. They really do. I mean, they can't afford to go and, and, and bring in a guy and him be the wrong guy. They really cannot do. There's so much pressure, in my opinion, this offseason on Dave Ziegler, Champ Kelly and Josh McDaniels to get it right. If they don't get it right, they can sit the franchise back multiple years, maybe even double digit years if they go and draft a guy and trust him to be that guy. Right. And I mean, I know everyone still kind of has flashbacks to what Josh McDaniels did in Denver when they got rid of their franchise quarterback and brought in Tim Tebow. And we all know how that works. So I know that that's still in the front of a lot of people's minds and thinking, man, I hope that 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 doesn't happen. This quarterback decision, whatever the Raiders do this offseason, man, is going to be so monumental. They have got to get it right. Uh, It's it's something that, like I said, I don't want to sit there and talk about every single day because the conversation becomes repetitive. But man, they have. Brother, <laughs> brother, and especially after you saw what you saw Monday Night Football, I totally understand where you're coming from, man. It's it's a it, it's a rough deal out there. Uh, Tom Brady does not look like the guy that a lot of people expected. Uh, I was even surprised about how bad and how rough he looked on Monday Night Football. Thank you for the text, though. I do appreciate you. Uh, up next is a call from Jordan in Oregon. He's calling to talk about the Monday podcast and the quarterback position and then also talk about head coach Josh McDaniels. Here he is, Jordan in Oregon. Hey, what's going on, Q? Jordan in Oregon. I wanted to call in, kind of chime in. I'm loving your Monday's podcast, man. Uh, just to talk about the quarterback talk, I think you're, you're pointing at your old saying, you're looking for a dog in that quarterback position. I, I agree with you, man. Um, secondly, I wanted to just chime in on a conversation I had with another diehard Raider fan. Uh, and a family member of mine, in fact. And, you know, he was, he was on the fence with everything that shook out with Carr, also on the fence with, uh, with McDaniels. And just as what he was saying, he, he thought McDaniels was a bit of a gambler this year. And once I heard him out on it, I, it made a little bit of sense, you know, going for two in the Kansas City game instead of just trying to tie it. Uh, the Arizona game early in the year, maybe getting a little bit aggressive um, instead of, you know, throwing it out there to Hunter Renfro in overtime and where he fumbled it and got taken back to the house. You know, maybe you run the ball there. Um, there's a couple other situations like goal line stands in the Niner game, some some fourth down tries. Uh, just he brought up three or four instances where McDaniels, instead of just taking the points and maybe being a little more Gruden-esque, uh, where he would a lot of times not be is extremely risky in those situations. I remember a lot of field goals getting taken in, in the five-yard line area. Um, I think – I think it was explained well to me. Is like thinks of McDaniel's a bit of a gambler, and and my reaction back to that is, you know, I think that gambling like that in, the, in a coach's first year, um, I think you can learn a lot about your team. You can learn a lot as a coach. And so McDaniel's, what has he got? Like six Super Bowls. I might be wrong on that number, but I got I got a lot of trust that that guy is going to figure it out more so than like let's say a, a player. I think it's a lot easier 
to uh, to change coaching and change a few things in your coaching philosophy after looking back at the tape, um, I think it's a little more easier and realistic to ask him to change his style just a little bit than it would be, let's say, to have uh, you know a leader of your team uh, change his style like a quarterback. And so I don't know, man. I just got me thinking is like McDaniel's corrections are a lot more correctable than it would have been like to ask Carr to change into that dog or ask Carr to change his style of play to run more, get outside of the pocket more. That wasn't Carr. And so, you know, all these paths kind of lead together. And I look at McDaniel's and Carr as like, which problems are, are more realistic to fix? And, and are, we're talking about a guy with six Super Bowls on his resume. Again, I could be wrong on that number or a guy with nine years that just really hasn't been able to change. And so, man, I know it's a bit of bringing McDaniels and Carr in the same voice, but I just, I'm excited about this coaching staff, excited about the team, excited about a new quarterback. Peace out, Q. Thanks so much for the call, my man. And yes, looking for dogs is basically what I was trying to say. And you heard me talk about it again in segment number one when I was talking about the quarterback possession. I might not have said it correct, and I'm okay with that. I have no problem saying, hey, look, this is what I meant by that. But I'm glad that you understand what I was talking about. Absolutely right. Talking about dogs. An absolute dog is what the Raiders need to have. They need to have a dog that can compete with Mahomes. They need to have a dog that can compete with, compete with Herbert. Also, a guy who can compete with Russell Wilson because I think he's going to get right. Not to mention the rest of the AFC. You got Joe Burrow. You got Josh Allen. I mean, you got you know Lamar Jackson. I mean, you got guys that can go in the AFC right now. So you really, really have to have a guy that can compete. And so that's really where I was trying to go with that. So thank you uh, so much for being able to pick up on that. So I don't feel as bad, but uh, definitely want to make sure that uh, that's you know that's known off top. As far as McDaniel's. Um, you know, he's, he's got a lot to prove in my opinion, next season, you know, he sat down car so he could bring in his guy, which is fine if that's what he chooses. Right. I mean, we heard the conversations for years about car sitting down and well, now he's down and he said goodbye. So, you know, he's gone now. Who's going to be the next guy. It's always tough to replace the dude. Right. And he was the dude for the longest. So now all eyes are going to be on, okay, who's the next guy. Is it the right guy? But we'll see how it goes. But I think McDaniels has a ton of pressure on him. And if he brings in his guy and it doesn't work out, he could be done, in my opinion, after this upcoming season. It depends on who he brings in, what the circumstances are. Does the team improve? Obviously, there's a lot that goes into it. But, man, you've got to get it right. You know, I don't think Mark Davis can afford. I know, as a matter of fact, Mark Davis can't afford to have a team sitting in uh, Las Vegas at Allegiant Stadium that just is not winning games. You cannot afford. I haven't been here in Las Vegas that long, but I've been here long enough. To know if you're not winning, they're not coming. It's going to be that simple. And then you're going to have another, uh, you know, a, a residency on the Las Vegas Strip that is just kind of a sideshow. You cannot afford to have that. Thank you so much for the call, my man. It's good to hear from you. I uh, got a text from JV Raider. He said, what up, Q? I listen to the show every day and enjoy every episode. So thank you for what you do, first and foremost. Well, Raider Nation, it's currently halftime of the Cowboys versus Buccaneers game. 18-0 is the score. I just heard Joe Buck mention the Raiders. He said Tom Brady has not been shut out in half of a postseason game since 2002 against the Raiders. That was the tuck rule game. Well, he was shut out in the first half tonight and even threw an interception in the red zone. Raider Nation, I really just want to know what would possess you to want this old guy on our team next year. It makes no logical sense. He's clearly on the decline. I really hope our staff doesn't fall for it because I really believe it will be a major whiff and will continue being disappointed as a fan base. It's clear the recipe to success is to find a talented young quarterback in the draft, build a solid defense to help our offense out. I won't say which quarterback we should draft, as I haven't done my homework yet, but someone in the first or second round that's worth the salt. On another note, what's something all these teams in the playoffs have in common? Defense, defense, defense. That will we, that's what we need to focus on. I trust Stidham to maybe start next year, but more importantly, develop the young quarterback and teach him McDaniel's scheme while we make some solid moves on defense. Honestly, surprised we weren't all in on Roquan Smith. Anyway, I hope the front office makes the right move and we get off this Tom Brady train ASAP. Thanks, Q. JV Raider out. Again, I don't even have to expand on that. That goes back to what I was talking about in segment number two. I believe most of Raider Nation felt that way when they saw that game Monday night as the Buccaneers just got blown out of the building by the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, finally, we'll wrap up with a call from Raider Tone in the 661. He's calling to ask the why when it comes to Derek Carr and the quarterback situation as it pertains to the Raiders. Here he is, Raider Tone in the 661. What's up, Q? It's your boy Tone from the 661. Uh, I'm calling in with the, uh, with the, with the why. And, and before I get into my why, 
tell you, man. Like I said, I'm from 661, Better Nation, that's Bakersfield. As y'all know, Derek Carr is from here. Went to school from, at Fresno State. Uh, in between his living in Texas also, uh, he also lived here in Bakersfield. Um, one of his brothers still coach here at uh, Bakersfield Christian. I probably see him about two or three times a week. Um, you know, I have a family member that plays um, on that team at Bakersfield Christian High School. Um, you can see you can see David Carr um, just randomly at Home Depot. Real cool guy. He's a giant too, man. He, he ain't a small guy at all. David Carr is not a small guy. And um, I kind of I kind of knew about his frustration. And you know, I won't say you know. When I ran into him in Bakersfield, what the conversation was about, about as far as, you know, what was supposedly be going on or, or what could have went on, whatever, man. It's not, you know, it's none of my business, you know. I'm, I'm one of them citizens who, who kind of just be, you know, even, even at work I'm like that. Keep my head down, do what I got to do, and go home. You know, I mind the business that pays me. Just like you, Q, I know you say you don't want to say a bad thing about a car. And it's, it's not that you can't, it's not that you would, it's not that you won't. At the end of the day, wasn't your decision and, 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 and why stir the pot? That's not, that's not paying into yours. You know? That's what my grandmother told me. Now I'm gonna get into, but, but me personally, it broke my heart. Me being, being, being from Bakersfield, and he was like a hometown hero, man. He was playing for my favorite team, and coming from a town that I that I was born and raised in, imagine that. But get into my why. Why wasn't he given another year in the system? Now, why couldn't we do that? Why couldn't we go into negotiation, restructure his contract? We know the cap is going up next year. Why we couldn't get into the contract, restructure Carr's deal, and um uh, and then just just fix the defense. Go into the go into the go into the year with, 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 with all money going to defense and majority of the draft picks. Draft with, with that first round pick. Draft the back. Draft a future quarterback or, or even a backup, right? At the least, right? So high enough draft pick, we should get quality into where he can either battle if he's that guy, he's gonna battle card for the first round for the um, starting spot or spit him for the backup. Why we couldn't do that? Just win, baby. Thank you, Tom, for the call. And honestly, my man, if you go back to shows like at the beginning of the 2022 season, I if if I had to bet money on it, I would have told you that Derek Carr was going to get at least two years in this system because the first year he never does that good in any system. You can go back to any of the systems he's had since he's been a Raiders quarterback. Every year he's in the first year, he always takes a step back, and then he improves. So I thought he was going to get at least two years uh, in the system to learn it and master it, especially with Devontae Adams and the weapons around him. And then you think about all the guys that were injured when it comes to Waller and Renfro. It just didn't happen. And it was really up until that report from Vinny Bonsignor came out that the final four games of the season were going to be huge for everyone, including Carr, that it really got on my radar. And then when they lost that Steelers game on Christmas Eve, that's when I thought, okay, it's done. And you can go back and look at the archives when it comes to the podcast. That's what I said. Right when right when that, that Steeler game got wrapped up, that was a Saturday. The, the following Monday podcast is when I started talking about that could have been the beginning of the end for Derek Carr, and eventually it was. So uh, I, I was like you. I thought that he was going to get two years for sure, minimal. But I know that the financials behind it is kind of what's driving the decision as well. So now it's all eyes on McDaniels, all eyes on Ziggler, all eyes on Champ Kelly. Got to get it right. You ran the dude off. Okay. Who's going to be the dude? Who's going to be the guy? Is this guy going to be better? Or is it going to be all of a sudden the, the quarterback carousel is going to open back up and the Raiders are going to be in a weird position for some years to come until they can find that franchise quarterback. That's what it can't be. I don't know what it can be, but that's what it can't be as far as I'm concerned. So thank you, Raider Tone, for closing us out on today's show. We got a text from North Texas Raider. We'll get to that on tomorrow's show. We'll get more news and notes, more conversation for sure as we continue to navigate through the week. So thanks, Raider Nation, so much for your feedback all the time. 707-654-4693. That's the Lockdown Raider Podcast voicemail line. You can always hit me up on Twitter at your boy Q254. My man Ari at Ari Produces on Twitter, holding it down, making sure that we're looking good on YouTube. And of course, thanks so much for making the show your first listen each and every day. Remember, 
you can find the show free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Thanks to my man, Ari. So until tomorrow, Raider Nation, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.